Have you ever wanted to drive in Gran Turismo on a wheel and pedals but you don't know where to start? Don't worry, this is the basic guide to using a wheel and pedals on Gran Turismo. There are no stupid questions in this video or in the comments. I'm going to start from absolute basics. So firstly, you're probably used to driving on one of these. It's a controller and there are some downsides to driving with a controller. Now I race at the highest level in Gran Turismo online. I race in real life as well. That's not important. I just want to let you know that there are great advantages to driving with a wheel, some drawbacks driving on a controller. So let me explain what they are. We'll go here to a random trap. We'll go to the Red Bull Ring and we'll just do an absolutely random race here against the Sophia, why, why not? So here we go. And I'm going to put my controller up here so you can see what I'm doing. You can see my inputs. So firstly, the movements that you get on the thumbstick are not as granular as you get on a steering wheel. You often have to wait for the last moment until the car really rotates. It's very difficult to delicately pitch the car on the brakes and get some subtle rotation. So you can see here, I'm making what are quite jerky movements on the straight. It's unbalancing the car. If I do that going into the corner, the car's gonna be unbalanced. It's only like, here, there we go. I get that rotation. And to me, that leads to a very different driving style being on a controller, which is I'm going in a straight line, braking deep into a corner, decelerating hard on the brake, and then getting that rotation. I can't be smooth. It's basically impossible for me anyway, and for a lot of other people to be smooth in the control. There are some very fast drivers in the world who drive on controllers, but they nearly always struggle with tyre wear because the driving just isn't as smooth as you can do on a wheel. The gearing as well is also not as intuitive. You can use the face buttons, or you can just bump buttons, or you can drive an automatic, it's not a problem as well. But if you're using manual gearing, and you can see there, when you have moments of oversteer, it's very hard to catch them subtly, and therefore you can't really benefit from slip angle, that I've explained in many guides and in my sim racing coaching is the one of the well one of the major factors of getting a lot of lap time. So here I want to give you an example. This is me driving on a pad at the Red Bull Ring um, as best as I can. Bit of oversteer now. I'm counter steering it. We've lost a lot of momentum in the car. Coming here to the penultimate corner, trying to be smooth. And it's very difficult because I don't have a lot of sort of travel on these triggers here on the dual sense they are amazing triggers much better than the xbox ones but again i just don't have that granularity that subtlety so if you're someone that is struggling on controller it might be because you're on a controller it might not be your driving you might be a lot smoother on a wheel so what i'm going to do now is show you how you use a wheel and pedals i'm just going to imagine that you've just bought one or you're about to buy one and you have no idea how it works so here I'm using the Logitech G Pro wheel and I'm actually going to take off the wheel here and show you. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Logitech. So big thanks to Logitech for sponsoring this video. And they make obviously, I mean, some of the best wheels you can get. This is the best direct drive steering wheel that I own. And I have quite a few. It's just absolutely solid. They also make the G923. Basically, they do the whole stack. But other wheels are available, but here I'm going to be talking about Logitech equipment. So here you can go. This is the steering wheel. And I'm going to run through what I do with all the buttons. But this is something that just attaches to the wheelbase. You can see on screen now. So what you need to do is make sure your wheelbase is attached to a solid surface either by a clamp or bolting it on but a clamp will work fine and make sure your pedals are on a flat surface as well and either pushed up against something or bolted to a rig i've got lots of videos on how to set all that up and then we're going to return here to the face of the wheel so i'm going to show you in gran turismo how i have this set up exactly so we're going to leave this race here and this is a secret menu that you might not know about but when you go here to options and you go to controllers you can see here your wheels are set up. So you've got wheels from other manufacturers. You've got Logitech G29 here and you've got the Logitech G Pro wheel here that I'm using. This is sort of like the granddaddy of wheels you can get. One of the most powerful wheels you can get on PlayStation. And this is how I have it set up. So obviously my wheel is not connected at the moment. It's not in the wheelbase, but this is what I have. So you can see everything one-to-one. -one. The most important things I have here, proper shifters. So I'm not using the spongy um, bumpers on the roller there. I also have just way more dedicated buttons around the place to do what I want to do. I've got these rotaries here to go through the different menus. In Gran Turismo, I've got buttons for my boost. I've got buttons for flashing the lights. I've got obviously my start, stop, take a screenshot, all that usual stuff. But I've basically got buttons way more easily reachable than on a controller where I might need to take my hands off thumbsticks and whatnot. And I also have my uh, navigation sort of nub here. So you can see exactly how that I've got that up on the screen. And now all I'm going to do with Logitech, because it has a quick release system, is I'm going to make sure this is aligned. 
So I'm going to put it in and listen to this. So that quick release is now connected. All I'm going to do is start my wheel. So I press the um, start stop button. It takes a couple of seconds to load up. It asks me what platform I want, PS5, PS4, or PC. PS5, please. So I just select that. It now makes sure it is centered. And all I do is press the PlayStation button and it just works. Like this wheel just works. And I've been using it for a year. So that is great. And now I'm in the menus and I can do all this stuff on the wheel. Now the other half of this is the pedals. Some people say the pedals are more important. So let's go into the pedals because there's stuff you can do in the pedals as well. So when it comes to the pedals, again, make sure they're connected. This all goes into your PlayStation via USB. That's super simple. USB into the PlayStation, power into the wheel and the pedals, and there'll be instructions when you buy that. But then in Gran Turismo, make sure you go here. Here's the steering controller settings. So you can see the top degree there, that's my wheel. So if I let it loose, it should go back to basically zero which it does, if I go like that even. So it's pretty much there. You can see there's a little bit of a tolerance because we are talking about tiny amounts. I've got the gear shift, which isn't showing here for some reason, but you can use a shifter. But these are the important ones, accelerator and the brakes. You can see here, I have actually set a dead zone on my throttle. So I'm moving my throttle a little bit now, but it's not showing. And that's because I don't want to be resting on the throttle. So when I do a lot of my sim racing coaching, when I coach people in Gran Turismo, I'll often be identifying if they're resting on the throttle on the brake. That's important to do. You come in here and you just calibrate that 100%. And the same with the brake. You definitely don't want to be resting on the brake. You're just going to be losing time. You're going to be slowing yourself down on the straight. So we're going to have a little dead zone in Gran Turismo itself. And because these pedals are load cell pedals, so the Logitech G Pro pedals, basically some of the best pedals you can get on console. I have so much precision. Look at this precision. You can't do this on a, on a, on a controller. So I can just modulate the brake exactly how I want it. This isn't done by travel. It's done by pressure because it's a load cell. So I can immediately go like, okay, I want to brake around here. I want to break around here. I want to break around here. And it's all pressure. Whereas if this travel, it would be very difficult to do. So that means you can be more precise. Accelerator is not a load cell, but it doesn't need to be. It's more about the brake pressure that's important. So I have it quite difficult to get to 100%. But um, it, that means it's kind of easy for me to bleed off the brake and do some trail braking. So that is super important. Now in Logitech settings as well, you can do stuff. So in my wheel on the G Pro, I can go through different presets. I can change the intensity of the force feedback and the true force. And if you do get Logitech, the true force is genuinely a big deal. It is not a gimmick. It gives you way more information about the road, how the car is handling. It just gives you genuinely more information from an API level. So that's a benefit you get there uh, as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go out to the track and I'm just gonna show you some stuff that you should really be thinking about. So when you've got your wheel and your pedals, you hook them all up, you've done your calibration setting, it's all working, you, you move the mill and it works, I would do this. Firstly, I would not stop on a live race track. I've done that before in real life, doesn't work. Go into a car in cockpit view like this, I'm going to put my handbrake on, and uh, you can see that when I move my wheel, it reflects where my hands are. So my hands in real life reflect where they are on the wheel. That's super, super, super important. If it's not working like that, you're gonna have problems. So when my hand's up here in real life, it's up there in the game. So if that's not working, go back into your wheel settings and change your wheel rotation. You might wanna to go to a high wheel rotation, a low wheel rotation, so do some trial and error there. By the way, just to explain, a shorter wheel rotation means that a tiny amount of wheel movement here will do a big change on the wheels, on the, on the tires. Uh, if you have a, if a much larger wheel rotation, a uh, movement here will do a much smaller rotation on the wheel. So it's a bit like sensitivity. Also check your pedals as well. I would recommend getting all of your settings up so you can see. Don't get this in VR, but you do here. So you can see here, I'm not resting on the pedal. Full throttle, off the pot, uh, off throttle. Same with the brake, got ABS on. Same with the brake, off. I'm not resting on it. If I was resting on it, I would see that. And then the other thing I would do is fiddle around with these settings here. So if you go into controller settings, these are the steering force feedback. I have it 8.8. 8. So if you're new to this, try 8.8. 8. You can see there's a warning there, but people try different settings. And if you have different settings, please put them in the comments. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure you subscribe and check out my other videos as well, because I've got lots of videos and this sort of stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and show you the difference of what to do. Now, I have noticed I am on wet weather tires here for some reason. 
Don't know why that is, but we're just going to roll with it. Maybe it's going to rain. Maybe the blue sky means rain. And it has to be a, a fair comparison, doesn't it? But you can see here just how much smoother I am able to be. So remember before, I'd be waggling, waggling, waggling on the wheel. I don't need to do that. I can be very, very, very smooth. I line myself up and on the brake. Have a look at the brake smoothness I'm applying as well. So I'm able to not lock up going into the corner. I'm able to trail brake into the corner so I don't have to wait for that deceleration at the end to get that rotation. I can ease the car in, turn the car in. And it's really about smoothness. And I'm sure there's lots of people watching that playing Gran Turismo on a controller and thinking, why am I just not winning races? Why am I not on the podium? And it honestly might be because on the controller you have to drive in a certain way and it's not realistic. There's a reason why at the Gran Turismo World Finals they make everyone drive on a wheel. Um, so here we go. You can see, just look at the smoothness I'm able to have. And it's really, really satisfying. I can feel the oversteer through the force feedback. And I would really recommend getting a force feedback wheel. My first steering wheel was not a force feedback wheel. So that's why I started. In hindsight, I should have just gone straight to a force feedback one. And again, Logitech G29 you can have some absolutely crazy deals on that. And in fact, if you go to the Logitech website now and use my code Kirith, you'll just get a form of discount. You even get a discount on this big one, Logitech G Pro. So a little bonus for you there. And I'm going to try and throw it up the inside here. Have a look at my brake modulation. Just trailing it off there. So this is night and day. I'm so much faster on the wheel. In fact, I'm going to go back to the controller now just to see. And this is not... This is not me um, tr trying to uh, do anything different. This is me genuinely trying to drive as fast as I can. I just don't quite have the same modulation. So I go up the gears. And I can try and be smooth here, but it's a very difficult thing to do. You're basically better off waggling. And then when we come in, again, the best thing for me to do is just brake 100%. That's really easy wait for that deceleration and then turn in but it's very jerky it's not it's not smooth and it limits the amount of techniques that i can do that i, I can apply in the real world and i know that for my real world driving let's try to see if we can get this podium though come on it's the controller steering wheel tag team come on very different way of driving gonna chuck it in come on i want this i want it come on it's a different way of doing it. Ah, uh, Let's see. I might have to be brave here. Brave or stupid. It's coming, going to come down to the last corner. Can I chuck? Oh, gosh. So we have done it, but you can see that it's a lot messier. And on the wheel, it's a way more calmer experience. I'm racing, I'm able to race closer with other cars, I'm able to race respectfully, and I'm able to experiment different techniques, whereas the controller is just this sort of like chaotic experience I find that has a ceiling on it. You're not going to become a better driver unless you're spending a, a, an insane amount of time on a controller, or I should rephrase it and say that you can build really solid fundamental driving, good driving technique by using a wheel. And I think that's way more difficult to do on a controller. So I hope this video has helped. A big thank you to Logitech for sponsoring this video. Go check out the links in the description if you're looking to pick up a wheel. But genuinely on Gran Turismo, it is a game I believe designed with wheels in mind, unlike Forza. So yeah, try one out at a mate's place, go to a convention, try before you buy buy from a place where you can always return it if it doesn't um, you know meet your expectations but i would say definitely 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 try it more videos around here about me using a wheel and i will see you next time so if you do want to grab a wheel or read up on them i do highly recommend the logitech g923 and the logitech g pro wheel depending on your skill level there are links in the description below to take you to each of these go check them out and enjoy